Hi, everyone. For those of you tuning in live, watching us on YouTube TV, welcome to Filoli Mansion. Uh, for the next 15 minutes, Reggie Rocanelli and Christina Jackson are going to serenade you with five songs. Our program will officially kick off at 7 o'clock, and they're going to lead us in some beautiful music before then. Again, I just want to say how grateful we are to have you here tonight, both uh, everybody here in person and those dialing in watching on YouTube TV. So with that, Christina and Reggie, the show is yours. Welcome. Thank you so much. Woo! Let me back up here. We're gonna Thank rock. you so much, Brian. Uh, I might have had a little bit too much red wine trying to stay warm, but you know what? That's all right. We're going to have a good time out here. Just a quick little story before I jump in here. You know, it was a, a chance encounter with Stevie Wonder that really has got me up here on this stage. Uh, the last month of my reign as Miss Wheelchair California, I was at an event in Las Vegas, and I was leaving the Las Vegas cent uh, Convention Center. And I rolled smack into Stevie Wonder. And he was so warm and generous, and he inspired and invigorated me and ignited me and told me to keep going. And so here I am up here with Reggie. So we're going to jump in here. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, this first song is called Valerie. And I clap along and sing along if you know the song. Well, sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water And I think of all the things of what you're doing And in my head I paint a picture Well, since I've come home Well, my body's been a mess And I miss your ginger hair And the way you like to dress I want you come on over Stop making it I put your house on up for sale. Did you get a good lawyer? Oh, oh, oh. I hope you didn't catch a ten. I hope you find the right man who fix it for you. Are you shopping anywhere? Choose the color of your hair. Are you busy? Since I've come home, well, my body's been a mess And I miss your ginger hair and the way you like to dress I want you to come on over Stop making a fool out of me Why don't you come on over my Sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water and I think of all the things of what you're doing and in my head I paint a picture. Well, since I've come home, well my body's been a mess and I miss your ginger hair and the way you like to dress. Why don't you come on over? Stop making a fool out of me. Why don't you come on over? Thank you guys. All right. We're going to keep it moving. Uh, this next song is by Maroon 5. It's called This Love. Yeah. 
I was so high, I did not recognize The fire burning in her eyes The chaos that controlled my mind Ain't love, she got on a plane Never to return again But always in my heart Oh, this love has taken its toll on me She said goodbye too many times before I tried my best to feed her appetite Keep her coming every night So hard to keep her satisfied Oh, kept playing in love like it was just a game Pretending to be the same Then turn around and leave again But I oh, this love has taken its toll on me And she said goodbye too many times before I brush you on your hips Bringing your fingertips into every inch of you Cause I know that's what you want me to do This love has taken its toll on me And she said goodbye too many times before When her heart is breaking in front of me I have no choice Cause I won't say goodbye I don't have to dream alone. Dream lover, so I don't have to. 
to dream along. That's good. Oh, fever, fever, midnight. This goes out to anybody that got the COVID. I love you Never know how much I care When you put your arms around me I get a fever that's so hard to bear You give me fever When you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight Fever In the morning Fever all through the night Moonlights of the night I light up when you call my name Cause I know you're gonna treat me right You give me fever With your kisses Fever when you hold me tight Fever In the morning A fever all through the night Everybody's got the fever that is something you all know fever isn't such a new thing fever happened long ago captain smith and pocahontas had a very mad affair when his daddy tried to kill him she said daddy daddy don't you dare he gives me fever with his kisses, fever when he holds me tight. Fever, I'm his missus. Fever all through the night. Now you listen to my story. Here's a point that I have made. Chicks would wanna give you fever, be it fair and hard to stand a great. They'll give you fever. Fever all through the night Fever When you hold him Fever when you hold him tight You give him fever Fever when you hold him tight Fever In the morning Fever all through the night Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I actually, um, I, I, I told Brian, I was like, I'd love to be part of this event. And I'm a huge Patsy, Fly Patsy Klein fan. And he said, oh, I love Patsy Klein. Let's do Patsy. So here's Walking After Midnight by Patsy Klein. Midnight. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I go out walking. After midnight, out in the moonlight, just like we used to do, I'm always walking. After midnight, searching for you. I walk for miles along the highway. Oh, that's just my way of oh, saying I love you. I'm always walking. After midnight, searching for you I stopped to see you with the willow Crying on his pillow Maybe he's crying for me And as the stars turn gloomy A night when whispers to me I'm lonesome as I can be I go out walking After midnight out in the moonlight Just hoping you may be somewhere walking After midnight searching for me
I stopped to see the weeping willow Riding on his pillow Maybe he's crying for me And as the snaps turn gloomy A night when whispers to me I'm lonesome as I can be I go out walking After midnight Out in the moonlight Just hoping you may be somewhere I'm walking after midnight, subject for me. Wow. Wow, well, that was amazing. Uh, this is incredible. So I've been asked a couple of times tonight, so I'd love to share with you all. I joined the disability community in 2002 after breaking my neck snowboarding. And doctors told me I might not ever walk again, but I might be able to speak again if I really dedicated myself to respiratory therapy. And singing was just like not even on the radar. So this is an absolute dream come true to be here singing for you all this evening. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, no way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's do Drift Away. Uh, nobody's taking us off the stage, so we're going to slide into Drift Away, all right? <laughs> and sing along if you know the words yes, on this. Yes, please. Day after day, I'm more confused. And I look for the light through the pouring rain. No, it's a game I hate to lose. Counting on you to see me through. Hey, give me the beat for the three, my soul. Gonna, gonna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Give me the beat for the three, my soul. Gonna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. to think I'm wasting time Don't understand the things I do The world outside looks so unkind Help me along Help me sing my song Give me the beat button to free my soul Wanna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away But free my soul Wanna get lost in your rock and roll And drift away And when my mind is free You know a melody can move me And when I'm feeling blue Guitar's coming true to soothe me Thanks for the joy that you're giving me. Want you to know I believe in your song. Rhythm and rhyme and harmony. Won't you help us along? Yeah. Help us sing this song. Give me the beat, boy, to free my soul. Want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Come on, everybody, Come sing. Come on, everybody. Sing Come it out. Come on. Yeah. Give, give me the beat, boy. Free my soul. Want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Hey, give me the beat, boy. Free my soul. Want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. But free my soul Wanna get lost in your rock and roll And drift away Awesome! <laughs> Thank you! One more? Okay, can I hug you? One more, is that? No, it's just, it's just called Okay, we're done, we're done?
Okay. Well, thank you so much. That's it for us. Yep, that's it for us. Thank you, guys. This and thank great. you for being here. Yeah. You're doing a great thing out there. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here. I'm sending out a lot of the love to the parents with kids with disabilities and special needs. We love you guys. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you. Thank you. You got everything? Good evening. I um, wanted to say thank you again so much for Christina and Reggie. Uh, I think you really are starting the evening off with a beautiful feeling. So, welcome everyone to our 13th annual Power of Possibilities. We're live from Filoli. My name is Linda Leo, and I'm the board chair of Ability Path. We, <laughs> thanks. We are so incredibly grateful that you are here with us tonight, either in person at Filoli or at home watching online. It has been a challenging year for so many, and it fills my heart to see all of us coming together to support Ability Path's impact on the lives of children and adults with developmental disabilities. We have an exciting program tonight with a wonderful lineup of speakers and entertainment, including Holly Robinson P, who is really good, <clears throat> who will be joining us virtually later on. I know it's going to be a very inspirational evening. Abilities Paths, 100 Years of serv Service and Impact are made with possible thanks to our generous community of supporters. Tonight, I have the honor of representing Abilities Paths dedicated board of directors in acknowledging our sponsors of this year's Power of Possibilities. We appreciate the generosity of our platinum sponsors, Cotchet, Petrie, and McCarthy. Sharon, yep, go ahead and apply. Sharon and Joel Friedman, Linda and Richard Leo, <laughs> Norman S. Wright, Mechanical Equipment, Mieko and Nick Poppin, Sutter Health, Mills Peninsula Medical Center, thank you, and the Ability Path Auxiliary, an extraordinary group of women, yeah, big applause for that, who have been supporting Ability Path's mission for more than 70 years. I know many of our auxiliary board and advisory council members are with us tonight, and I want to extend my sincere gratitude for their volunteer hours, their financial support, and especially their unwavering dedication to Abilities Path Mission of Inclusion. These truly are exceptional women who have kept a lot of things going during the pandemic. We are grateful to our gold sponsors and benefactors, Alberta and Bill and Al Aldinger, Janice Bertold Hefferman Insurance, Elaine and George Cohen, elect Woo! <laughs> Electronic Arts, Jay Gellert, Graybird Foundation, Katie and Brian Nider, Oracle, Barbara and Paul Reagan. I'd also like to thank the many silver, bronze, partner, and friend sponsors and benefactors, whom you'll see listed on your screens. Many of you have been longtime friends of Ability Path, and your ongoing generosity is so very meaningful to our mission. A big thank you again to all our sponsors. We appreciate your support that has made tonight's event possible. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Ability Path CEO, Brian Nider. So glad you're coming up here. <laughs> we are extremely fortunate to have his thoughtful and visionary leadership, not just during these challenging times, but all times. Brian. Thank you, Linda. Um, it's great to see all of you here tonight. Can you believe it's been 14 months since we've been able to get together? Are you excited to be here? Let's hear that a little bit louder. Come on, this is the first time we've been out. 
This is great. Um, you know, this has been a, the script says memorable year. I'm not sure about memorable, but it's certainly been unforgettable. And uh, through all of that, the support from all of you, our community, and I want to thank our board of directors. If our board members can stand up for a minute, I want a huge round of applause for all of their support for our staff and all that we've done this past year. Thank you, thank you, thank you, board members, for all of your support. You know, many of you may not know, but when the, COVID, when the pandemic first broke out, the board unanimously voted to allow us to pay all of our staff their full salaries, even though we had no idea if there's going to be a PPP loan or any of that, we guaranteed their salaries for the first almost 100 days of the pandemic. And that shows you the kind of commitment that we have to our team. So almost a year ago, we turned 100. We held our event all online, first time ever. And we're going to go back in, uh, in, in a, the Wayback Machine here for a minute and just show you a quick video from where we were about a year ago. So if we want to roll that clip. Cheers to 100 years. <laughs> Gate path, 100 years, wow. Congratulations on your 100th year anniversary from all your friends at Baylor. We've enjoyed serving with you and look forward to the next 100 years. Congratulations. Happy 100th anniversary, Gay Path. Thank you for all you do. Cheers. Congratulations, Gay Path. And happy 100th anniversary. anniversary. Happy 100 years, Gay Path. Thank you for all you do. I want to congratulate Community Gate Path for 100 years of turning disabilities into possibilities. Thank you. All right. That was pretty amazing. So that was a year ago when we were Gate Path. It wasn't about, uh, but more than four weeks after that, we officially announced our renaming to Ability Path. And that's driven in part by our recent merger with Abilities United. The rebranding was funded and led by the Graybird Foundation. Graybird table right up here. Who are here tonight and I want to thank Jill Grossman, Renee Spooner and their entire team for the passion and award-winning work they did in the rebranding to Ability Path. They helped set the stage for our second century of service and we couldn't have done it without their support. By the way, they, the work that they did won multiple uh, marketing awards. They won Davies Awards and Marcom Marketing Awards for all of the rebranding for Ability Path. So again, Graybird, thank you so much for all of your work. What we've done over the past year has been nothing short of remarkable. Recognizing there's important work to do towards creating a more inclusive community for all, we also elevated our work around diversity, equity, and inclusion last year. Our HR team formed a committee of staff who developed a DEI statement for our organization. We increased our communications and conversations around diversity. And we're really proud of the work that we're doing to extend the, the nature of our mission going forward. Amidst all the challenges created by the pandemic, our team adapted our programs to continue delivering services during the shelter-in-place orders. Our admin teams provided technology support to help establish online programming. They helped implement healthy food and safety health and safety protocols, complemented and completed a ton of remodeling work during the pandemic. For those of you who may know, we redid the entire uh, middle field facility for our inclusive preschool there during the pandemic. We reopened the preschool in February. The resilience and dedication from our staff and those we serve has been nothing short of inspiring. I want to tell you a little bit more about what we've done to change our services during the pandemic. For our children's therapy team, we provided teletherapy services. Within about 10 days, we went from all in-person services to over 85% of our program being offered virtually. We know during the first five years of development for the children we serve, it's so important that they are able to have access to that service and we're very grateful for all of our early interventionists and our child, children's therapy team for the work that they did. You can imagine what this past year has particularly been challenging for families and children with special needs who often require additional care and support. 
Our Family Support Services team ensured that those families were connected to the resources they needed for their family and for their children. They were able to continue providing free online developmental screenings to identify any concerns that family members might have and providing access to services much needed during COVID. Our inclusive preschools where children with and without special needs attend classes together has been operating in person since June 15th of last year. As essential workers, our early education professionals have provided significant support for all the families in their care throughout the entire pandemic. For adults, our independent living skills coaches have ensured individuals have the support they need for daily living and emergency needs. We've been providing more than 180 online classes each week for the folks that we serve in our programs. And those programs were created within about a 30-day window from all of our staff. In addition to that, we know that some folks may not have access or the ability to use technology. Our team has put together for more than 150 individuals more than 4,000 activity packs during COVID so that they could participate along with programming. Online social opportunities such as lunch buddies and holiday celebrations have been very important throughout the pandemic and our auxiliary volunteers have been critical in making those programs for a success. Thank you, auxiliary. Our employment services team has been supporting the unique needs of those who currently can't work during COVID, but also those that are working as essential workers and frontline workers throughout the entire pandemic. And I want you to watch this next video that shares the story of the folks we serve that have been working as frontline workers this entire time. I think you're going to be impressed and inspired by their stories. When it's colder, we're made for each other. In any weather, we're stronger together. When it's colder, we're made for each other In any weather, we're stronger together In any weather, we're stronger together Yesterday, I got my eye on all the days ahead. Yesterday was yesterday, I got my eye on all the days ahead. Heroes never stay at home, never are they all alone. Never stay at home Never are they all alone Hold me when it's colder We're made for each other In any weather We're stronger Together a huge round of applause for those heroes that have been working the entire time throughout the pandemic. Amazing. Linda, I think uh, it's time for us to recognize a very special person. I will get out. Okay, work provides a sense of pride and inclusion for many of the adults we serve tonight. Brian and I have the tremendous honor of introducing the Neil Poppin Award. Each year, we present this award to an individual in our employment program who has inspired us with their dedication and accomplishments. 
someone who has achieved their dreams. Neil was a huge inspiration and joy to everyone he encountered. Sadly, he is no longer with us, but his legacy lives on through each one of the award recipients that have come after him. Neil's parents, Nick and Mieko Poppin, couldn't be with us tonight, but I'm hoping they're viewing online and we can all say hi and a thank you. <laughs> The Poppins have had a long and enduring relationship with Ability Path and are helping ensure our services are sustained into the future. As members of our Legacy Society, we can't thank you enough for your support. Nick and Mieko, thank you. And now we're honored to introduce this year's Neil Poppin Award winner, She's been a dedicated employee at Safeway throughout the pandemic. Her friendly demeanor, positive attitude, and hard work have helped her excel in the workplace. Her story demonstrates why it is so critical for Ability Path to be here today and into the future, so we can help each of the individuals we serve achieve their full potential, achieve greater independence, and reach for their dreams. Let's meet this year's Neil Poppin Award winner. Hi, I'm Sharon. <laughs> As being a person that was born with a disability, I am proud of myself that in society, I'm ever to be able to live by myself, function, be able to make my own grocery, pay my bills, and be able to go to work and maintain my job. And I made it to be a manager at my job. And that is something I am so proud of. When I first met Sharon, it was right before the pandemic and, you know, she just recently moved to the San Jose area and she was, you know, struggling with adjusting to the new job. There was a point where Sharon did express to me that she just was tired and she wanted to give up because it was very hard and, um, with having a job coach to support her, she's been more confident in how she, you know, approach her interactions with, with others. So Jessica is my job coach. Oh my God, I love Jessica. When I first met her, you know, I was outside on the curb. I was crying. I mean, in the beginning it was, you know, kind of rough. And she spoke up for me and helped me speak up for myself. I looked over and I saw Miss Sharon just extremely upset crying, shaking, um, she was down and out. The relationship that we have, it's more um, mentor versus me actually telling her her job because she's really good at it. So I do a drive up and go, which is customers, they uh, make their deliveries online and I shop for them and make their groceries for them. Some of my regular customers that I got, I'm really friendly with them. They're actually happy to see me. I have never looked forward to getting groceries so much in my entire life. I have literally made a new friend. It's like she is shopping for groceries for her own family and she makes sure that everything I have is exactly what I need. She is a light and a joy and she's just an incredible and capable person. Roman, my manager, he's really a good manager. And he see that I'm a hard worker and he always congratulate me on being a good worker. She's one of my top performers, always leading the team, meeting her numbers that we uh, measure with a daily basis. The customer interaction is, is it's the friendly as, as it can be. I think all it comes down to her great attitude, willingness to go an extra mile, her determination, and uh, having a job coach from uh, Ability Path it's been helping for her. I'm extremely proud of herself, the way she come from the day one to now. Since I moved to San Jose, Safeway been the best job that I feel like I ever had. And I feel like I accomplished a lot and I learned a lot working at Safeway. And I really love working there a lot. Sharon deserves this award because she overcame like five obstacles in one. Oh, she's very independent and she's just such a hard worker, you know, and I think that overall she's really a resilient individual. I have many dreams for my life. Buying a house, having kids one day, and being a great auntie. You can do anything. You just gotta believe. Anything is possible.
ladies and gentlemen, this year's Neil Poppin Award winner, Sharon Bodie. everyone for coming tonight and I just want to say that I am so proud and honored to receive the Mary Poppins Award. I love being a part of Ability Path. They have helped me so much to maintain my job and also be strong for myself and not let people take advantage of me. And as me having a disability, I have accomplished so much in my life and society and I just want to say anybody with a disability can accomplish anything. And thank you all for coming tonight. <laughs> Congratulations again, Sharon. That was amazing. At Ability Path, our mission and vision and values are a North Star. We believe it is our role as an organization and as a community to support, not define, the hopes and dreams of those that we serve. For far too long, the folks that we serve have been underestimated for what is possible, what they want to achieve. Several years ago, we had a group from Genentech show up at our Burlingame site, and they were doing some job coaching. They're helping put together resumes and interview uh, skills. And in that, I, I showed up a little bit late and out on a table in front of the building were all of these dream boards that all of the individuals that were doing the interview class had put together. And the thing that really struck me was the dreams and hopes we all have are universal. They're for love, they're for acceptance, they're for a good job, they're for a nice time on a beach, a nice car, a cat, a dog, you name it. It is universal. And what struck me, and we talked to our adult services team, our job is to be life coaches to help those dreams come true. And so we're doing a lot of work right now, and this is part of the fund and need. Our goal is to change all of our programs to allow that to happen. We've had a couple of programs we put together of pilots. We've shared our design and our vision with the state of California, as well as the local regional centers. And it's about empowering and allowing the dreams to come to the table and for us to enable those to happen. So when we return to in-person services, you're gonna see us start to modify and change everything we do to allow the hopes and dreams become reality for the folks that we serve. We're really excited about that. So with that, we're going to run a uh, little video to share a little bit more about what we imagine the future can be from the voices of the folks that we serve. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> What's your name? Zoe. We are very excited for Zoe to be um, an independent uh, person in the community, um, living with uh, other other folks with, uh, with special needs, and have uh, potentially a part-time job and mm -hmm. friends and gain independence. One thing I'll say is yeah. she's very social. As you can see, she's loving all this attention, and so we'd like her to be definitely in, a, in an environment what? where she can be social, both inside the mm -hmm. house but also out in the community, meeting people, because she loves that. My hopes and dreams um, for my future, it's most likely living, making a living out of my art. It's most likely my job as well. 
I am so blessed because I am in, uh, 30 years ago and uh, in my same way, my apartment. And I am one day, I am knowing how to knit and cooking. Well, the book I just made, it takes me a two years, almost two years to make. It's, named, it's called Super Bunny Wonder Bear. My whole between, uh, well, book I made is a Star Wars animation production. My dream and hope is to train EMTs not to forget what to look for if it's this one or this one. Because either one can save a life when time is sensitive. My accomplishments that I'm proud of is living independently, working full-time at Whole Foods, and winning gold medals in aquatics. My dream is to volunteer at a child care center. And for the whole world, I want to see peace, love, and honesty. My name is Brady. And how old are you, Brady? And I am eight years old. What are your hobbies? How about you? What are your hobbies? I like dreams and fire trucks. The dreams I have for Brady with inclusion are to be accepted and um, just so our kids could be seen as people, not Brady, not people with disabilities or special needs, but just, you know, and Brady has a lot of friends in the neighborhood um, who see past the disability. They never ask, why doesn't he talk? Why does he do this? So that's what I see for my son, just acceptance. I'm proud of who I am, and I won't give up. Just dream and go for it. Never give up. It just takes faith, trust, and a little bit of pixie dust. You want your kids to be happy. That's all. And Zoe, what makes you feel proud? Me! <laughs> So that's what your support provides. It enables us to be able to help the folks that we serve in our children's therapy, our early intervention, our inclusive preschools, and our adult programs. It allows them to become reality. So with that, I'm gonna invite Jeff and Neil to come up uh, for our Fund to Future. Thank you. Does this work? It does. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming out for a beautiful night. I'm Jeff Fallick. That was my daughter, Zoe, and my lovely wife, Shannon's right there. And she does have some hopes and dreams. And uh, thanks to Ability Path, uh, they are being achieved. She's going to graduate from high school in three weeks. And we, we have a unique uh, story in that last year when we talked about the merging of these two amazing organizations, Community Gate Path and Abilities United. We lived in Belmont when Zoe was a young girl and she was the uh, 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 participant at the first inclusive preschool, preschool at Milestones. And then we moved to the South Bay and she went to Abilities United. And lo and behold, 10 years later, they merged, and here we are together, two amazing organizations, and it, I couldn't be prouder for everyone here and all the participants, and we're doing a great job. So thank you. So as many of you know, this is the time where we're going to raise some money. and. How much money have we really spent in the last year and a half, right? Who's gone where? Who's done what? I mean, Neil's going to take over pretty soon, and he's going to ask you to dig, and I'm going to go out there and run around like an idiot and ask you to dig. But um, we've already raised a lot of money, I think, at this point 
point, um, well, I'm going to let Neil sell of that, but the, the goal for the fund of the future need is $200,000. It's, it's big, I get it, but I'm hoping you can all join us in uh, participating in what is a very big goal. So with that, I'm going to go run around and be an idiot, which I already am. Yeah, exactly. Take it away. Thank you, partner. Hey, first of all, it's good to see everybody. Isn't it just nice to be outside? Yeah, we've all been locked up for a year. I'm looking at this crowd. The guys got the suits on. The women look beautiful. Everyone's in a great mood. No one's spending any money in a year, so everybody's flush, ready to drop some coin tonight. We're happy to see that. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, our goal tonight uh, is $200,000. You've got your paddle. And how many know that remember this drill from the last 10 years we've been doing this? Paddle goes up. When I call out a number, and they'll come around, get that number. You'll give them money. You'll feel real good about yourself uh, because you can say, I did something very special for some of the people on the video. So you got the opportunity to change a life or two tonight, and we encourage you to do that. Uh, so what's happened to this point? Online, by the way, we have a, a crowd online. We're not forgetting you. Uh, you can give as well. If you follow the instructions online or go to the community gate path, or pardon me, the ability gate path. I still got to get used to that. Ability gate path name. Uh, you can go ahead and donate online. Uh, I'd like to mention that we've got a, a couple people who have been kind enough to donate already. Uh, we have uh, the Poppins, of course, Mieko uh, and Nick, uh, as well as the Jungross, who have been very kind to donate $40,000, uh, and thank them very, Woo! very much for that. Thank you. And we have a video uh, from one of our longtime supporters, uh, Joel Friedman and his wife Sharon. So I think we're going to cue that up to get started. I've been involved with Ability Path for many, many years, going back to its roots with uh, Easter Seals. It's always been an amazing organization, but the way that Brian and his team have responded to the pandemic has been nothing short of extraordinary. The new model of delivering service both in person and remotely will position Ability Path to serve many, many families well into the future. In appreciation for their remarkable commitment, Sharon and I are really pleased to offer to match up to $25,000 in the Fund a Future program tonight and hope that you'll all give very, very generously. All right, so fantastic. So we've got Jeff Fallick out there, Jeff with the microphone. I'm here. You may not recognize him. You haven't seen him in two years, and he's put a little bit of weight on during COVID. Uh, the, the 19 is yeah. real. Yeah, so first of all, please do not mention that if you see him, because he is very, very self-conscious about it. And if we say something about his weight gain, it's going to be an awkward situation. Hey, That's nine, rule number 19 one. pounds for 19,000. <laughs> it's a fair trade. All right. Uh, we are going to start uh, at the $10,000 level. We're going to work our way down, uh, and I know people around the room are feeling very generous tonight. So at $10,000, I'm going to start it off uh, by donating $10,000 in the name of Jeff's very shy and beautiful daughter, Zoe. Uh, uh, and thank you, Neil. At the two else is in for the $10,000 level. Nancy Nishimura, thanks so much. Paddle 166. Rich, thanks so very much. Thank you, Rich. The Rich and Linda, thanks so very much at 215, 218. Thank, thank you very much. And Jeff, can you work your way to the back? There's some. Uh, Huge start. Oh, we got one back there. 274. Jeff, thanks so much. <laughs> Jeff, you called that number in the back. Let us know who's 274. back there. 274. I got to hear this name. That's a big number. Thank you. Oh, she's crying. I love it. By the way, anyone uh, who is donating, you feel the, the need or you'd like to say something about why you're donating, why the organization is special to you, feel free to grab the mic from Jeff and do so. So, Jeff, who we got back there? Patty White, people. Uh, Patty White, who I have not seen, and her husband, Jim. I, how are you? Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, we got over this way. I know uh, it's going to be a little, Jeff, could you work your way that way? I can't run. I'm fat, I haven't remember? exercised in a while. <laughs> we got 178. <laughs> Take your time. We don't want any injuries. All right. Take your time, Jeff. <laughs> who do we have here? The Delahanties. The Delahanties. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. In the front, we have Frank Mario Petrie. 
That's just Frank making me run yeah. again. Jesus, Repres Frank. Representing his Italian heritage in Cappuccino High School, a local boy. Frank, Thank would you, you Frank. like to say anything? Yeah, this is the name of Dominic Brungo, my grandson, two oh, years old. Nice. Love that. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know what he said, that was but awesome. I, thank you. I think he just swore in Italian. That was awesome. All right. Probably at me. I got to say, I see Jeff is actually on the screen. It, Jeff, it's very slenderizing seeing you on TV. It's good news. All I'm right. Anybody else at the $10,000? We, we've done very well at the $10,000 level. Before we move on to the $5,000 last opportunity here, not the last opportunity, you can tomorrow get online and do what you need to do. But thanks very much to that group. That was fantastic. Oh, we forget one? We got another one. Oh, we got another one. Thanks so much. We have... Coming in hot. Up. No, you don't want it. Okay. Anonymous 252. It's anonymous. We Very like pretty anonymous. lady with the blonde anonymous. hair. 252 Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. So we're going to move uh, to the $5,000 level. Now, look, in the last year, people have not been out. You're kind of unclear how you interact with each other. So what we're going to do, Jeff, is we're going to add a special gift. We are going to add a civility and etiquette lesson given by the former president, Donald Trump, for anyone who gives $5,000 or more. I can see he's got a lot of fans here. <laughs> at the $5,000 level, anybody at the $5,000, 288, Margaret Taylor, thanks so much. Margaret, Margaret Taylor. Taylor. Public official in the front. So Jeff, I'm gonna let you work your way to Margaret, then go to the back. Hello, Margaret. Thank you very much. Absolutely, Margaret. of my late husband, Floyd Ganella who worked with kids with disabilities for many, many years. God bless Floyd. Thank you. God bless Floyd. Thank you. All right, so Margaret has very uh, kindly made a donation in the name of her husband, who she recently lost. So Margaret, thank you so much for that. And we love, love your husband. Floyd's the best. We have right, one two, right one, here. Four. There you go, sir. We're just, we're just very grateful to be here. And we have two new grand, uh, grandson and granddaughter. And uh, they're just the joy of our lives. So what you're doing is fantastic. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you awesome. Jeff, you got a head behind you, 160. Right behind you, you got 136, 160. She's closer. Remember, I'm, t I'm trying to lose the weight, I know. But here we go. She's close. Uh, Patty and Rusty Roof. And we are very blessed, so we like blessing other people. And this is in honor of Brian and Linda Leo. Wonderful. Thank you, Patty. And thank you, Linda and Brian. Oh, here we go. I'm coming over there next. Keep it close. I'm coming. Hi. Um, we're the parents of uh, Nathan Rosenberg, who is actually pictured there. So we're delighted with uh, ability. Uh, and thank you very much. Awesome. Thank Here's you. to Nathan. Thank you for your donation. No. Okay. We're just going to go very quiet 116 for 5000 Thank you. 250, you got something to say. Uh, this is on behalf of Goldman Sachs, and thanks for all this organization does. Does Goldman Sachs have any money left? You sure you're okay? <laughs> okay, we're good. Thank you, Goldman Sachs. Jeff, Hi, Jeff please don't make fun of the donors. Thanks. Oh, yeah, noted. You, you can make fun of me, make, make fun, fun of someone of else, just not the donors. I'm not going to make fun of 295, I promise. Now this is, thank you very much. This is from Jerry and Byrne King. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. <laughs> Staying with the same table. This is in honor of all the special kids of La Selva Drive. <laughs> Woo! Love it. Love it. Good table right here. Oh, coming over here. Hi, I'm Florence Wong. Happy to give. Thank you, Florence. Coming over here. I'm running, Neil, just for the record. So on behalf of Graybird, we are delighted about how well everybody has embraced the new AbilityPath brand that we've been enjoying for a whole year now, just about. So thank you for all the work that you do. Awesome. Thank you, Graybird. OK. I'm so Jeff, breath. before you get to the next one, let me just mention with what we received already, we are at one hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars. Woo! Amazing. And while Jeff's moving, let me also thank those of you online. I'm watching your names come up. Thank everyone online who's donating right now. We really appreciate it. You're, you're making a big impact. All right, yes. folks. Jeff, are you done in the back of the room at that level? 
I'm just walking around. I, I have missed some numbers. I was just pointed out. So if you could uh, remind Kim in the back uh, we have of your number. People around are getting down your numbers. Don't worry. If, you're, if your paddle went out, we know who you are. We are to move down to $2,500 level. $2,500 up. Can you get those paddles up and wave them? Fantastic. 186. Thank you so much. 182. 133. 196. 291. And we got 188. 180. 190, thank you so much, 190. Anybody else in the back of the $2,500 level? 250, 250, thanks so much. And if ever, anyone wants to say anything, go for it. On the $2,500 level, we anybody don't discriminate. Would, anyone like the mic to talk about anyone your experience wants the mic? with Ability Gate Path? All right, we got 290 in the back. Thank you, 290. Oh, someone does. Oh, I know her. Hello, Bree. Um, so I'm a proud resident of Los Altos and I've seen a lot of people at Safeway and Trader Joe's and it's powerful tonight to know they were supported by you. Um, it makes me emotional as a parent because everybody's life is so purposeful and important and now I know more backstory and we cannot give up on anyone and I think as parents our gift is to learn from our children. So the fact that you're here tonight, I think we can all learn from the stories that we have, and I'm honored to be at my table, and we better get well over 200,000. I'm so <laughs> proud. Thank you. Thank you, Bree. All right, thank, thank you so much. We are now gonna go to the $1,000 level. If you're at 1,000, please put your paddle up. We'll call your number out. The spotters will find you. 506. On this side of the room. 130. 130. 184. 301. Uh, 152. 129. 237. 258. 301. We got it. I think we called out 314. 506. 170. Well, that table's lighting up over there. And, oh, and 171, oh, that's the lawyer table. Oh, God, well, fantastic. Table. Well, we like the lawyer tables. All right, anyone this, would anyone like to say something at that level? It's open mic night here at the gardens. Come on. Come on. This table is One on, and only. This, this table's on fire. Let's go. All right, here we, we go. Just, hold, on. hold on. Hold on, McCarthy. Oh, no. You did not give Julie are, the microphone. Oh, we're no. honored. Yeah, don't. We're honored to be here tonight and be able to share this evening with everyone and welcome this momentous occasion when we can be without masks. Yes. Thank you. I'm doing this on behalf of my kids and my kid's name for all the other children. And I think she donated more than me, so I'm going to give her a chance. Oh, that, that doesn't matter. Any any amount is is, is so uh, well um, received, I'm sure. But it is such an honor to be here, and it is so nice to be in such an environment that we haven't been in over a year, and for such a great cause. And the honor is ours. And thank you for having us. All right. Thank you. All I right. love it. Table so very, of green. Very well said. So we're going to go through our last three uh, levels, Jeff. We're going to go 500, 250, then 100. So 500, if you're at the $500 level, you get those paddles up, we will call your numbers out. So All I'm right. gonna start over here, 285, 231, 31. thank you so much. 101, 127, 131, thank you so much. 500, 128, thank you so much. 148, 280, 222, these keep going, I love it. 112, and Jeff, can you get those ones in the back? I can't see quite yeah, that Yeah, I know far. you're old. You can't see that far, so I'll take it from here. 201-244-226. Uh, All right, folks, thanks so much. 250 the $250 level. Every dollar you give makes a big impact here. 208 thank you so much. 212 thank you. 144 142 154 234 224 230, 209, 208, 294, 251, 105, 122, and 169. If I called your paddle up, you wouldn't mind putting it down. Okay, terrific. And our last level, Jeff, is uh, I, I left somebody over here. 100 bucks. Who'd I, who'd I forget? 120. 
120, 120, thanks so much. Hundred bucks, hundred dollars, hundred bucks, a cost of a couple of Starbucks got, coffees. We got two one one. And maybe a scope. Two, three, five. I think everyone donated 502, 511. I think everyone donated a lot more, so we're I, good. I appreciate that. So I actually have the final results, Jeff, right in front of me because we've I got did, some online I, I can, donations. I can see them too. First, I, I want to just thank this room. We do this every year, and sometimes it can be awkward, but uh, this group always makes it easy, and you're always so generous to Ability Pass. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your kindness each and every year doing this. Right now, we are at. $224,000 that was raised in the past 20 minutes. So thank you all very much. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your generosity in supporting our programs. Neil and Jeff, thank you for running our Fund of Future. Big round of applause for Jeff and Neil. You know, we were, I'll be honest with you, we were concerned coming in tonight if we're going to be able to achieve that goal. I can't tell you how much it means for your outpouring of generosity. I'm honored to introduce Holly Robinson Pete from her role on 21 Drum Street to her family docuseries for Pete's sake. Holly Robinson Pete has consistently used her celebrity status as a platform to advocate for issues uh, near and dear to her heart. Following her father's battle with Parkinson's disease, she and her husband, Rodney Pete, a former NFL quarterback, formed the Holly Rod Foundation. In 2005, they extended the foundation's mission to provide support and resources for those affected by autism following their oldest son's diagnosis. Holly co-authored with her then 12-year-old daughter the NAACP Image Award-winning My Brother Charlie a children's book about autism from the sibling's perspective. Her latest book, Same But Different, Team Life on the Autism Express, co-authored with her twin, twin sons, Ryan and RJ, also garnered glowing reviews. Today, she is one of the most sought after and prolific autism advocates in the United States. We are honored to have Holly with us here tonight as part of the Power of Possibilities. Please join me in welcoming Holly Robinson Pete. Hey, thank you so much for having me tonight. Good evening, everyone. Ability Path, it is so great to be here with you. I wanna thank you for all the amazing work that you do. Advocating for children and adults and families is such noble work, in my opinion, is very underappreciated. And I just really enjoyed watching all the Instagram posts from the amazing human beings that you lift and support every day. I want to also congratulate Sharon on her award for achieving such great success at her job at Safeway. You are awesome, Sharon. Congratulations. You know, meaningful employment can be a life changer for an individual who has developmental differences. They just want the same things as everyone else. Friends, love, respect, inclusion, the ability to self-advocate, and a paycheck. When my son RJ was three years old, he was diagnosed with autism. We were told on that day all the things he would never do. We call that, we literally call that the never day. He would never speak, communicate, mainstream in school. What else did they say? Play team sports, say I love you in a meaningful manner. It was like you name it, we were told he would never do it. And man, to receive such a hopeless and bleak diagnosis for a three-year-old, it just seemed extremely cruel and short-sighted. Um, for someone to tell you what anyone can do or be when they're just three years old is extremely unfair. I mean, what a parent who is getting that diagnosis right then needs is a source of hope, uh, a source of, of support, and resources and to be shown possibilities and to be told to never ever give up on their child and i think that's one of the main reasons why as a family we chose to speak so openly and share our autism journey with everyone 
we didn't really see other celebrities um, who we knew had kids with autism doing that at the time. And I understand that it's not for everyone to be so open about their personal lives, especially when it comes to the privacy of a child. Um, but I think in the end, we really knew, in, in hindsight, we were really right, that if we used our platform wisely as a family, we could help others in a way that we didn't get help in 2000. As a rookie mom trying to process the whole autism diagnosis, it was overwhelming. My husband, then an NFL quarterback, well, he did not have a playbook for autism. And so it was extra hard for him and he was sort of steeped in denial uh, about our son and his diagnosis. Um, but to use another corny football analogy, we built a team around our son. Team RJ was in full effect. And we fought hard for him because we refused to allow him to be deduced to a list of nevers. One of the other things that we were told he would never have was meaningful employment. So when RJ was about 15 or 16, we started to talk with him about what jobs he would like to do. And every day after high school, he would go and hang out at this local bird store. He loves birds, loves animals, loves birds especially, and he he would hang out there so often that I got a little worried that the owner might think, you know, he was, what was this kid doing, or was he weird, or whatever, you know, was he a menace or a threat? So I went down there to talk to her, and it turns out she had a niece and nephew with autism, and she totally understood RJ, and she just got his energy, thank God. And she said she wanted to offer him a job, but she was worried that he might be offended when she asked him, uh, if she asked him to clean up the bird poop. And of course, RJ screamed, I love bird poop. I have no problem with that. But my husband wanted RJ to work at a local sandwich shop where he knew the owner and manager. Uh, and then, you know, he thought that there would be someone there to look out for him because we were concerned about him you know, being out in public, being around people without us there. And um, I was concerned about the lunch rush hour and I could envision someone yelling at him to hurry up. And then I just was nervous about all that. Then my mom chimed in and she said she wanted her grandson uh, to be a model because he was fine, he was gorgeous. And so she just went ahead and called one of her modeling agent friends and quickly set up a photo shoot for him, which by the way, he absolutely crushed. I mean, these photos were, I mean, unbelievable. And the photographer said he had a gift, that the camera captured the purity of his soul. Can you imagine? But he didn't really enjoy being touched and poked and prodded and, and, and fussed over like models have to get. And so um, we were kind of back to the drawing board. We were documenting all these job opportunities on our show for Pete's sake where you know, I really wanted to show a family rallying around their son and supporting him with love and acceptance. For too long, there's been such little representation on TV and in the media in general of this beautiful, unique community. And I knew no one had ever seen a docu-series with a young black man with autism navigating the world. And so I just i am so glad that we were able to do those shows. So as it turns out, one of the vice presidents of the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team was watching the show and reached out to us and he asked us, does Archie really want a job? Because we, we think we might have something for him. A clubhouse attendant position. One of the star players at the, the Dodgers uh, at the time had an older brother with Down syndrome and the team just rallied around this young man and I, just in general as a team, they were just such a a, a very compassionate ball club towards people with developmental differences, special needs, autism, so many things. And so down we went with RJ to Dodger Stadium, his mother and his father holding his hand, even though he was already taller than both of us. And after the manager, Dave Roberts, interviewed him, uh, Jock Peterson, the player, immediately took him around and introduced him to everyone in the clubhouse. He got the job on the spot. It was a glorious moment. I could sob just thinking about it now. Mommy tears. And now he's in a sixth season with the Dodgers and has a World Series ring that was presented to him just recently by all the players. Oh my goodness, amazing. Um, I'm just so indebted to this ball club for hiring inclusively and just that they understand the value of having 
a diverse workforce. RJ's job changed him. It made him feel more confident. It made him feel more comfortable in the world. It gave him value. Um, it, it helped him to self-advocate. And most importantly, if he were here, he would say it gave him a paycheck. When you know, RJ got the job, the first thing he said to me was, well, that's another thing that that doctor got wrong, mom. Check that off the list. Every time something special happens for him surrounding the Dodgers, um, when they introduce him on opening day, whatever it is, I'm always thanking the players for being so good to him. I mean, this is a kid who grew up virtually with no friends, and now he has a whole clubhouse full of big brothers that will always have his back. And they're always telling me that RJ is a gift to them. They thank me for him when they lose a game or if things go bad or if there's an issue. RJ's smile and energy lifts them up which means the world to me. With support and opportunities, all individuals can achieve their potential and beyond. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love about being an autism advocate is sharing our story and hearing the stories of others. Some of the best people that I've met in my life have been folks and families I've connected with during this 20 year autism journey. Our community is fierce and tenacious, and we can be hardcore sometimes, but we are compassionate and loving and generous. You know, I wouldn't go so far as to say this disorder has been a blessing, but it sure has brought some pretty amazing people and opportunities into our lives. When we started our Holly Rod Foundation, you know, we really just wanted to make sure that families with loved ones with autism felt heard and seen. And we also wanted to speak from experience as RJ grew, the foundation grew. When RJ was uh, verbally challenged as a little boy and had very little language, we lobbied Apple to donate their iPads. And this was something back then they hadn't even considered or really acknowledged the importance of technology for our communities. Uh, when RJ was in elementary school, we wrote a book that we're so proud of called My Brother Charlie, a children's book from, told from a sibling's point of view to help explain what autism was because there was so much misinformation and we wanted school kids to start early to start erasing the stigma of autism. When RJ went to middle school, we wrote a book with RJ and his twin sister as co-authors called Same But Different Teen Life on the Autism Express. Middle school was very, very difficult for RJ, as it can be for lots of kids with or without autism, and we wanted to document um, some of these struggles that he, he had to deal with and share stories about how autism can impact the entire family, especially the siblings. And now that RJ is a working man, and um, now we have many job programs and job fairs and we, we connect with corporations to help them um, hire inclusively. And I want to get more kids like RJ, young people like RJ employed. I'm very proud of an initiative that I'm the ambassador for now, a new initiative called Delivering Jobs. And I encourage everyone to look at deliveringjobs.org to help get jobs for young people uh, with many different issues. Um, what I love to say is that, I mean, if you hire our kids, sometimes they can be the best employee you will ever have. Um, and they, and so important to help people with special needs achieve their full potential. I want to thank you. Thank you, Ability Path, for your years of support and advocacy. Uh, it's so inspirational to me. You know, there's nothing broken about RJ. I always say I wouldn't change RJ for the world. But what I would do, though, is change the world for him. I'd make this place, um, I'd make this world a place that fought harder to understand people who process the world around them differently. And I would make this place be more patient and compassionate and kind. I would also continue to make the world a more inclusive place where lives are valued no matter what the developmental issue may be. Thank you so much for changing the world ability path. And thank you so much for having me tonight. Mwah. Thank you, Holly, for being part of tonight's
13th Annual Power of Possibilities. For those of you at home watching, uh, I want to thank you for your donations. I can see them coming in uh, on the screen here. Uh, I think Jeff wants to say something. Well, he's, do you need a microphone or you got it? <laughs> yeah, we'll be Dodger fans for tonight. Perfect. So we're going to do one quick picture. So John's going to take, so I want everybody to put your hands up. We're going to do, I'm not going to do a selfie. I was going to do a selfie, but he's the real photographer. So I'm going to turn around and see your hands up. Let's show some energy. All right. We never get a group picture of the whole audience. All right. So uh, for the folks who have been involved in our organization, you know we're 100 years old, now 101. And by being here tonight, all of you are ambassadors of our mission, our mission for acceptance, respect, and inclusion. I want to thank our development committee for helping put tonight's planning together, Jen Wagstaff Hilton, Sibyl Whittem, Jeff Brown, Rex Ishibashi, Todd Gemmer, Alberta Aldinger, and Diane Christensen. And Linda Leo was on the committee as well before becoming board chair. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the work and planning put together by our marketing and development team led by Kim Malhotra. Kim, thank you. Kim, stand up. Where are you? You need to raise your hand so we can see you. There's Kim at the back table. Kristen Ramirez, Krishna Daniels, Carrie Hagen, Karen French, Samantha Baker. You did an incredible job. Do you like the venue? Should we come back here next year? You did a fantastic job, ladies. Thank you. And I also want to thank all of our staff volunteers. Put your hand up so we can see you. As you know, there's a lot of work. There are months. They're back there at the Ability Path table. Thank you, team. I want to thank uh, Janet Wagner. Janet came through in the, in the pinch and provided some uh, health care staff. Oh. Candace is right here. Thank you. We had a nurse here for those that needed testing, if they needed a rapid test. Thank you for coming and making those who may have forgotten their documentation able to get in. Um, you know, our staff are some of the most dedicated and passionate people that you'll ever meet. And the children, adults, and families we get to serve are absolutely amazing. I admire the strength and determination that you saw in all the videos and all the stories. I'm proud to be part of Ability Path. And we're very grateful for all of you being here this evening. Thank you for being part of our community and making us part of your community. Before we go, I think uh, the centerpieces are available if you want them. You look underneath the hand sanitizer. If you have the dot, that means you get to have it. If you want to trade it with somebody else, feel free to do that. The uh, online auction is open until May 16th at 9. The Fund of Future is going to remain open until May 31st. Who knew that the centerpiece would be so exciting? Here we go. You got the hand sanitizer. Everybody's flipping those over. So with that, the 13th Annual Power Possibilities comes to a close. Thank you for your generosity. We hope you enjoyed the evening. It was great to see all of you.